we are going to be playing a small song so that we you can understand what our group is all about With a smile for hours at a time, stare at the ceiling while I hold back what's this on is my dream mind. Song. When they ask me how I'm doing, I say I'm just fine. And when they ask me how I'm doing, I say I'm just fine. Fact is, I can never get off of my mattress, and all that they can ask is. everybody we are part of the community stories and practices group and have been exploring what are stories and practices along with how they affect us and as individuals and as a community so today we are going to be telling you a few stories try to connect with these personas with people in real life This is Safira. When she was 7 years old, she was intrigued by football. When her friend group wanted to play with the boys, they said, "This is a boys game. You can't keep up. Girls are weak and you should go play with your dolls instead." Many of the girls walked away from sports. Despite the backlash, she channeled the criticism meant to put her down as feedback to grow to become a footballer. The story she told herself was that no one can define her worth. that enforced her practice of growth mindset and persistence which led her to create her own women's empowerment football club if she hadn't followed this practice she wouldn't have won and reached where she is today throughout her life she faced a lot of resistance however she broke through gender stereotypes and is an example for girls all around the world i'm sure you all are aware of the olympics this year did you know that all the women in the olympics are safiras they had to go through these struggles as well and only 2.2% of contestants in the olympics are women so now let's move on to the next story this is alia she's 15 years old all her friends are in relationships however she is not whenever she and her friends meet up She feels like an alien. She has pressurized her in herself into being in a relationship of her own. She tells herself that she needs a boyfriend to be complete and fit in. She immerses herself in the gossip and toxicity practiced by her friends to meet her need for belonging. Sometimes the gossip and toxicity gets on her nerves. Did you know that 80% of Americans experience toxic relationships? But she tells us that she must continue on the same path as her friends otherwise Arya would have no friends and be labeled a loser This is Harry growing up Harry was a sensitive child but whenever he was hurt he was instructed to lift his head up and walk on like nothing happened his dad always told him Boys do not cry. For the past 17 years, he has been suppressing his emotions, not letting a single teardrop escape. Over those years, bullying has become a practice. 
He feels a sense of power from being in control of other people's pain because Harry was not in control of his own pain. But Harry is not alone in this. Did you know that 80% of males suppress their emotions? This is Jade. Jade didn't come from a wealthy background. This is why her parents got her married as soon as she graduated from 12th grade. Just like the 15 million girls that get married every year. Now she has a 6 year old child, heavy household responsibilities and has no other identity than being a wife and a mother. She constantly reminds herself that she is incapable of doing anything else even though it may not be true. In her free time, Jade reflects on her life so far. Regret often pops up. She regrets not standing her ground and pursuing higher education. This is Dave. When he was a little boy, he was mocked, bullied and body shamed by his friends in society for having a darker skin tone. He never thought he could fit in. Over time, social media compounded his insecurities about himself. Seeing two set perfect lives made him lonely as he distanced himself from people. He started eating lesser and soon became anorexic. His self-esteem is very low and his confidence is very volatile. Just like many others in the world dealing with unrealistic beauty standards imposed on us. On a very related note, did you know that 70 million people struggle with eating disorders globally? This is Pooja. She grew up in a conservative family living in Mumbai. As a child, she was very happy and content, dancing her way through life. However, the Indian education system caught up with her in the second grade when she failed her class. Her parents were upset. They thought that dancing would get her nowhere in life. She gave up dancing and dedicated all her time to studying. She got comfortable in the discomfort of all work and no play. Her maths teacher noticed her smile disappear and an anxiety bubble form around her. The teacher was aware that one in three adolescent kids experience anxiety. So her teacher called her in. Pooja was terrified, but the question that came out of the teacher's mouth left her astounded and in a state of wonder. What do you do for fun? She became aware of her anxiety and need to please her parents. From that day onwards, she made a choice to bring balance into her life and that learning doesn't have to be tedious. It can be joyful. It took her some time, but dancing came back into her life. She explored many more domains and felt a lot more centered. Right now, these are only six of these stories that we've heard. Let's think about our neighborhood, our cities, our country, and even the world. We live in a world with 7.3 billion people. Each with billions of stories of their own. There could be many unresourceful stories, fueled by the movies that we watch and the songs that we listen to. No. I'm sure you must have heard your children listen to songs like Cheap Thrills, Golden, etc. Is this lunch break? Which objectify women and normalize substance abuse. But imagine if we had more stories like mm -hmm. Safira and Pooja's that not only empower us, but also inspire. Think about how much of a better world we would live in. Right now, most of us don't even know that we are trapped in these stories. Did you know the percentage of adults who experienced any symptoms of depression was highest among those aged 18 to 29? Mental health and substance abuse disorder affects 13% of the world's population. Every year, worldwide, Alcohol is the cause of 5.3% of deaths, or 1 in every 20 people. Around 1 in 8 children aged 5 to 19 are estimated to have at least one mental health problem. 
7.5% of Indians suffer from some mental disorder. In 2019, over 19 women of every 100,000 across India have, exper have experienced domestic abuse in some form. One, about one in four adults suffered a diagnosable mental disorder in a given year. And we've just touched the surface, which is why freedom to us means breaking out of the shackles that bind us to these unresourceful cycles created by our stories and practices. This will leave us space to build newer and better stories and with those, a better world. But how can we build better stories? That's a good question. Let's look into it. As said before, as said before, most of the times people aren't even conscious of the stories they tell themselves, which leads to different practices, which is why awareness is key. We need to spot these stories and practices, accept them, and then make a choice. Is this helping me or not? Based on that, we either we either break it or build on the story of practice, which helps us manifest a better practice. We can take Alia as an example. Let's help her out. Everyone around her is in a relationship. She has become aware that this is pressurizing her and she, she is doing this out of her unmet need for belonging. Alia now needs to make a choice. She can continue with this practice or cultivate a new one. She chooses to prioritize herself and finds a new way to meet her need for belonging and inclusion. She builds new values and codes that help her find friends that help her grow and be more authentic. She has now manifested a new practice of being true to herself. Now that we've learned a little bit more about this process, we hope you and the audience were able to take away something from this. Because we have a question for you. What are the unresourceful stories you tell yourself? And do you think you can use this tool to get out of them and try and break them? We're leaving you with this question today and we will send you this slide and the tool for reference so you can think about it at home. Let's move on. From our research, we figured out that a lot of the problems around us are created by the unresourceful stories and practices we follow. For example, racism, sexism, corrupt leaders, unhealthy lifestyles, overuse of non-renewable energy, predatorial behavior, etc. We intend to continue working on our mission by 1. Exploring the stories and practices that exist in our community by gathering and analyzing more information through primary research. And our second step is creating resources like books, apps, podcasts, websites, and other such things to spread awareness on stories, practices, how they affect you, and how you can deal with them. Thank, Thank you. you.